<laughs> I've been asked quite a bit recently about why I talk about this as love. People get really pissed about it. And I can understand that. <laughs> and there's various things at different times i'll probably say something completely different about why why it might feel appropriate to talk about unconditional love And it would be better if I didn't ever mention it. If I just said unconditional, it would be more appropriate, more accurate. But then the unconditional feels like love. So there we are, unconditional love. Unconditional love with no exclusion. Unconditional love completely undeserved. It's really the undeserving nature of this. You haven't earned this. You don't deserve this. <laughs> you haven't got this. You can't get this. It's all unconditional, but you can't not have it any more than you could have it. It's utterly unconditional. No one can have more or less of it. There isn't any of it to have. There isn't an it, there isn't a this. There is nothing more unconditional. It's everything. And that feels like love. and all encompassing, complete. Nothing else kind of love. Not what people refer to as love at all. And um, it turns out that love is not the answer. You know the lovely romantic ideal of love being the answer. Well, no, love isn't the answer. This isn't the answer. This simply doesn't ask any questions. This is unquestionab unquestionably this. There's, <laughs> there's nothing All the questions are this, all the answers. And it can simply be obvious that life is not asking any questions. Life's never asked, asked anything of you whatsoever. Life doesn't ask questions, you do. Life doesn't answer any questions, you do. So this isn't the end of questions. Questions are included, answers are included but they're all empty in an absolute way. I don't know how, but it, again, it can just be obvious that there are no solutions. There's nothing to be solved. Life's not a puzzle. There aren't any pieces missing for you to find to make this complete. This is complete with all 
regardless of all the stories of missing pieces and puzzles and questions. Just as it is. And unconditional love is just as it is and could not be otherwise. This is as it is, isn't it? Is it ever not? No, of course not. That's all we're speaking of. It's ridiculous. As most of people who question me about why I speak about this, I said, well, there isn't a reason other than it feels loving to do so, that there isn't anything to be achieved. The impossibility of achievement, the impossibility of enlightenment or awakening or liberation, whatever else you fantasized some human beings have attained, So maybe the only liberation is disappointment that you won't get to where you've imagined you could get to simply because there's nowhere to get to and no one to get there. So there, are, there is the appearance of mountains to climb and you can reach the summit of a mountain and you can stand on the top and feel a sense of great achievement because <laughs> the a mountain a mountain really does appear to exist and you can really appear to climb it and you can get to the summit but in this pursuit, which most would call spiritual, most would, or maybe existential, I don't know. This, so what I mean is you can seek physical, material achievement. And relatively, that you can succeed at doing something. But at being, at being, more or less being, higher or lower being, bullshit. But being is indivisible. It has no hierarchy. It is absolutely uniform. It is totally neutral. There is no higher or lower. And that impossibility of inequality of being might feel like unconditional love. I'd be surprised if it didn't. If you'd like to ask anything, just put your hand up. Um, if you'd like to, I don't know if there's something that you'd like for us to talk about, to discuss. 
I don't mind. Oh, Michael, go ahead. Michael. I thought a lot about what you say about love, Tim, and at first it didn't resonate. No, you said, you told me, <laughs> you told me that. You know, but after what, after time, it's now seen as, love is now seen as the reflection of this deep longing and loneliness that's endemic in the human condition and a profound intuitive knowing that we are each other, that in the deepest sense, we exist only in the shared language. Although we're separate and can never meet, this longing and knowing that we are each other seems to be love to me, seems to feel like love. I equate love with longing and loneliness that we all relate to. If you ask anyone, do you feel lonely? They'll say yes. Um... To me, that's love. It has a bittersweetness and a relevance only in the human condition. Only human beings experience love, and and I get in more trouble for that than anything. I think you do. Yeah, <laughs> that always yeah. amuses me because people don't like their dogs not loving them. I don't. No, <laughs> they get really pissed off about. Don't dare tell anyone who has a dog that their dog doesn't love them. God, you love them. <laughs> <laughs> or their cat. <laughs> or cat. Well, everyone knows cats don't love you. Fucking hell. Yeah. That's oh. obvious. Dogs is a little bit more, you know, a gray area. But cats, yeah. well, it's under, everyone knows a cat couldn't give a shit about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think love is uniquely human, and it's one of the, uh, the most precious qualities of being human. Without love, yeah, life is too hard. Um, we would have died out a long time ago without love. I think it's evolution's um, ability to select those people that love each other. A mother loves her child. A child loves a mother. Uh, this deep feeling we have for each other, we would die without. Like I said, life is too hard. It's too, too vague. But love seems to be the kingpin, the, the cornerstone that holds it all together. And I thank you, Tim, for <laughs> for that. For awesome. that. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Tim. Hmm. Yeah, there is a there is a a real a profound melancholy with the aloneness of so that <laughs> there really is no love I mean not as a thing so this when I'm speaking about unconditional love I'm really not I'm not talking about emotional love 
really. I thought that for me, there's something else, this relational love, you know, the love that between a mother and a child and this unconditional love is, is this like, is a completely, mm, it's utterly neutral. It doesn't have this. So when Michael's, the, the love that Michael speaks of, of course that is love. I'm, I'm going to suggest that it's all love, which is outrageous. That's the most outrageous. So whether there's love as a feeling or not, it's all love. Now, that'll get you in trouble saying that. But, but there is no love. There's only love. That's what I'm suggesting. You won't find love. There isn't a thing called love. There's love. And it's everything. All of it. And that, <laughs> that, that never goes down well. Because what, what self going to do with that? What can I do with that? Well, there's nothing to be done with it at all. Nothing. You can't do anything with it. It's everything. So how is that useful to me? No, it's not useful in any way. This is not useful. It's of no use. That's the unconditional love. If it was of use, it would be fucking conditional. And what most people refer to of, of, as love is this not that well the whole unconditional is that this is that everything all of that all of that without exception no exclusion there's nothing outside there is no outside for anything to be outside. The whole illusion is that you're inside and all of the rest is outside. There is no outside. And of course, if there is no outside, there is no inside. The whole illusion is that you know the difference. I am the knowing of the difference between inside and outside. between me and you. Well, there's neither me or you, or in between me or you. All of that is illusory, all of it. Nothing inside, nothing outside, nothing in between. Natalie has a hand up. Hi, Natalie. Hi. Hi there. How are you? Oh, um, How are you doing? I'm good. You know what? I've never known love. Do you know what I mean? It's just no. love is. I don't know it. No. Um, it just... It... it I don't know. It, it's like those thoughts of moving towards something uh, just don't make any sense because it's just like it all appears here just as it appears. I mean, thoughts of like, I'm going to do this or that, whatever, just appear. It's so natural and effortless. Like there's no, I mean, those thoughts of I could control something. It's like a tree controlling the budding of a of a blossom you know these blossoms these buds are all around me it's springtime but um it's just so amazing but in such an ordinary way uh you know what i mean by that it's like no, nothing do. changes nothing has changed it's all just the same no. it's just it just appears um as it appears this is, um, i know that's saying nothing but yeah. this is very much like seeing all human beings as just as you would see a tree i mean right. we don't we don't go around criticizing trees do we 
some we, might. <laughs> we, just we just don't hear people going up. And no, you don't. Going, hmm, it's not really done well with this branch distribution. And um, it's got a little bit too much growth on that side. And there's not enough symmetry. And, you know, I mean, we are, we are exactly the same as trees. Yeah. Just happen to be being human rather than being trees. Yeah. That's everything. Everything is being what it is. Yeah. But the being what it is is <laughs> absolutely <laughs> the same. It's, I mean, I, I now find it as ridiculous to suggest to people, you know, that they've made poor choices and they need to improve their choices as ridiculous as saying a tree should, you know, as you grow, you know, you, so far you've not done that well. You just need to, I think you could do, you could really improve on your leaf growth. Exactly. Like what, I mean, we are as we are, we do as we do. And criticizing it maybe that's natural for some maybe they've you know just who knows I, I mean there's just not any knowing of any of it no this is timeless this is stationary you know it's just yeah. immovable yeah it doesn't move i just said nothing there anyway <laughs> just, just like no one's just saying like, you anything, know, just like everything yeah and you do when you meet human beings I, I don't mean that you won't ever be critical of a human being's behavior or anything i'm not saying any of that and no, you will and naturally there's liking just like i prefer an oak tree to a willow tree i will say i really do love an oak tree and a willow tree is okay well, that's pretty much how it is when I meet human beings. I'll go, God, he's gorgeous. I really love being with him. Isn't it amazing? And then the other one, mm, yeah, he's all right. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's just, just so, just no one has anything to do with that. I mean, no. it comes up so naturally. It's. I mean, I, I mean, who knows? All right. If you tried to work out why you like one tree more than another, you'd be making that shit up to say that you know why. And you've got no idea why at all. None. And the stories just come up so naturally too. You yeah. know, the responses. You just, you know, someone says something and then just a response, whether you, I yeah. mean, it is, it is unconditional love because it's everything. There isn't anything excluded. No. There, you know, there isn't an actual right or wrong. You know, no. it's just mind blowing. It, I, I mean it is it is <laughs> yeah and the most unconditional love is the impossibility of getting it right of course not the he's always so afraid of getting it wrong but when there is no right way of course that's the that's well how could there be there's no one doing it so there couldn't be a right or a no, wrong way this is, that's, Timeless. That, that's, that's it yeah well and when there, like when today, there is no, there is no way, then there can't be a right or a wrong way because there is no right. way. Right, right. Um, today I went outside in the morning and it was dark and I went out to smoke a cigarette. And um, I just glanced over and I saw these two giant piles of like garbage. And I was like, wow, I guess these people are throwing out all their furniture. And then I turned and looked back again and all of a sudden there were two cars there. Now someone might say, well, you know, you're crazy or someone might say your eyes you know you're they weren't adjusted to the light there's just no telling how anything is going to show up it no. just appears as it appears you know it's just literally amazing but it is just the same as it i mean not the same i don't know whatever blah blah it's good. It's, cool. it's good. It's all meaningless anyway. We're just chirping birds here. It's, We're it's, not talking about it's it. It's all blah blah. Yeah. What else are we gonna do? What else are we gonna do? I know. Okay. <laughs> well, it's lovely seeing you. You too.
Razia, has a hand up. <laughs> Hi, Razia. Um, <laughs> I mean, we, uh, we are going to, it's like, you're looking at Shakespeare who says, love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. It is an ever fixed mark that bends on tempters. I mean, people have written about love from ages. Look at Rumi oh, yeah. <laughs> and the love songs. I mean, we all are love songs. Yeah, Rumi, Rumi yeah. was a bit obsessed, wasn't he? Yes, beloved, <laughs> lover and the beloved. Yeah. So this obsession with love has been there all along. And ultimately, when you ask any sage, they would only say that this is love. This is love. That's it. And uh, so obviously, it's not uh, confined to the dream. Because within this, it's love is conditional. You know? I mean, it's conditional till it's not conditional. I think so, because there's so much of bad years we have within us, right? I mean, that's what Rumi says. And uh, when you look at people, you're looking at, oh, he's Christian, or oh, he's, uh, you know, like, you and in, immediately, you that's the Jehovah's Witness there, right? Or, uh, you know, like, we start identifying, labeling, and this is all done by the mind. And that is done, with, we can't deny that. You know, and I mean, there were times when I would look at people and say, oh gosh, how can I love this person? You know, it was hard to love people. I'm <laughs> I, I'm not going to say that it's <laughs> easy. Yeah. Some people, you just can't love them. Yeah. <laughs> because cause they don't love you. And that's what I worked out. <laughs> but they didn't, didn't love me. And somehow I didn't love them in return, you know? Yeah, And then when I thought about it and I started to realize that it wasn't me that didn't love. That somehow it was also like a like a give and take situation like happening. There. Like I couldn't love that person because they didn't love me. So now I had to go back and look at hey, what was I doing that made these people not like me, you know? Right. It was like a whole self-inquiry, self-examining myself. Where did I go wrong? And gradually, it's like I started to change now. It started to happen. Something happens within you. And uh, you know, here you are ending up uh, caring for a person that had made your life so miserable. And you're looking at that person with love in your eyes, you know, and you can feel that tremendous that that you're looking at at like I don't know and then it's like you just dissolve because and you're saying be gentle to others be kind be I mean like you and you you just want to elevate pain you want to take away that whatever it is you know that's troubling them and there's this gentleness that comes through but I'm not going to say that I'm perfect. I look at people and, and I really, love Really, you're not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say that, that I love everyone. I mean, sometimes people irritate me. That's true. No, but, <laughs> so I mean, the, the, love that, <laughs> the love that I'm speaking of is that you don't love everyone. Yeah. I mean, if so, you... Yeah, if, it's like, if 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 love wasn't not loving, then it wouldn't be unconditional love, would it? I mean, there, there's there's just as much in not loving someone as there is in loving. Yeah, that's that's the love. that's the unconditional love that I'm trying to suggest yeah. or speak of. It's it's impossible to speak of, really. But so the love that I'm speaking of is equally yeah the the ones that you don't love. That's unconditional yes. love. Because you see, there's no one choosing to love or not. Yeah. You don't get any say. Yeah. I mean, isn't it the most when I talk about, you know, choice and the the whole notion of free will being illusory, 
the best analogy I the one that I usually go to is falling in love with someone this falling in love which virtually everyone knows is utterly out of control of self self does not have any say over who you fall in love with it's often against all logic rational it's (laughs) against your better judgment and um and it's exactly the same when you dislike someone. So you meet someone and the rational mind goes, and you you have a you almost have a revulsion at meeting that human being. You feel very uncomfortable. There's discomfort, there's unease, and it doesn't make sense. And the rational mind tries to say, well, that's not reasonable. Well, it doesn't have to be reasonable. It's just as it is. That's unconditional love right there. Yes. And also, uh, when you're going through this, like like other qualities, also somehow, like like it's easier to forgive, you know? And then there's the, the anger is much more like, like you're not getting angry with people. It's like everything is, uh, then you're not afraid now of showing people that you love them, you know? No, like you, you want to hug them. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah all, it's Without the self-consciousness, like, you're not afraid, no. Yeah, you're not afraid, now Because you're going to say, I love you to the person, and even if he's not going to say, I love you back, or he, she, it doesn't matter, because that's it, you know? You just love them, yeah. and you don't care if they love you back. No. And, uh, yeah, that's Thanks. Love Rachel. is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Kira, do you want to say something? The way that you're describing the, there's there's nothing to get. No. There's nothing to get. No. We've been brought up to believe that we're going to meet someone and we're going to fall in love and we're going to live happily ever after. That well, there's this thing that we're going to get. That's what we've. Well, you might meet of... you might meet someone and fall in love happily ever after. Definitely not. Well, no, definitely not. And I think probably all of us know. <laughs> then you think, oh, well, this is the wrong one, so I'm going to try again. But I will say the other bit. Who knows? But not the happily ever after. No, definitely not. No. That's probably the, the, the. That's probably the. Basis the worst, of it. That's hmm? probably the biggest cause of suffering. It is. I agree. Of all. This fantasy of happily ever after. Well, number one, happiness just comes and goes. Everyone knows this. There is no permanent happiness. What a, mm. what a crock of shit that is. Mm. And of course, there is no ever after either. And there's no the one either. I don't think there's the one. I haven't met the one. I think there's that idea that, you know, that'll happen. And then, oh, no, that didn't work out. So well, the, well, well, let's try again. And then yeah. realizing eventually yeah, there's nothing to get. No, there isn't. There isn't there's the one. There's nothing to get. Well, the whole notion of the one. I mean, I think. Oh, whether, yes. Okay. Whether, it, whether it's romantic or spiritual. So in romantic love, there is the one who will complete me. And in spirituality, yeah. there is the one, the absolute one. And then I will become one with the one. And then I, I will be the completion. <laughs> Both are equal fantasies. And of course, there isn't any one to become complete. There isn't anyone with some parts missing. You know, the, the faultiness, the not good enough, the... Mm. missing pieces and he will complete that she will complete me and then no as michael pointed out earlier the aloneness of this is absolute yeah and that's what's so disorientating i was i was saying a couple of weeks ago how disorientating it is that a that a a reference point that has been on the horizon since childhood, which is yes. meeting someone and having mm-hmm. this life. Yeah. And then when that's gone, 
Mm -hmm. It's like being in space. Oh, it is. Very disorientating. Yeah. Very disorientating. There's a reason why it's like being in space. Go on. There's only space. <laughs> There's only space. Boom, boom. Yes. <laughs> So of course it is like being in space. This oh. is this is just space. Yeah. There's only yeah. space. I mean, here we are. We're. I mean, I like this story. We're we're just we're we're in space, floating on a rock. We're just these tiny little, I don't know, you know, totally worthless, insignificant, beautifully insignificant beings on this rock, in this vast abyss. We don't even know whether it's infinite or finite. Probably both. Who the fuck knows? No one will ever know. Human beings will never know what the fuck this is. And that, that above all is the great liberation. The liberation is this is not knowable. That's the freedom. And you won't know yourself, Kira. You can pretend. Everyone pretends how much... I mean, you've done a lot of self-awareness work. I don't doubt you've done loads. You've done self-inquiry. You've done a lot of self-improvement. <laughs> and um, you're hoping to meet somebody who's done about the same amount as you, because then you'll be compatible. And then you could share yourselves and become one beautiful whole self as two selves. It's well... There's no, that's what's so disappointing is when that falls away it's disappointing and a relief at the same time oh no it is a relief there is relief but there's but it's also disappointing immense disappointment this is the most disappointing message you could ever hear there is no possibility yeah. i'm suggesting i'm not even suggesting it i'm fucking saying it there is no possibility I mean, you can't get more disappointing than that. It's, it's absolute disappointment. It's the destroyer of all dreams. <laughs> this was a movie. The end would just come up right now on the screen. The There's end. Nothing else to it. The end. La fin. And yet, you still might meet someone and there might be a love story. Oh, yeah. oh yes, because it's fun. Oh. Well, partly in uh, yeah, it is fun. Well, it's fun. I mean, there you go, Kira. You you live in your fantasy of how fun it'll be. It will probably be dreadful. <laughs> it'll be so painful. The longing. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll. I think it'll be fun. I'm going to go with that version. <laughs> Good one. Stick with it. That sounds yeah. much more uplifting no, than the version. <laughs> or it could be any versions, couldn't it? Any version. Yeah, we've all got our own version. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing about the version of the fantasy is, is it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, because it, it's not even going to be what it will be. You know, K. Sarah, my mum loved that song. She would often sing that to me. When I was just a boy, my mother yeah. sang to me, K Sarah. And my mother did sing K Sarah to me. And um, <laughs> I liked her singing it. And, but of course, there is no what will be. Even that's destroyed. But of course, in the destruction of what will be, nothing is lost. Because there never was, there never is what will be. There is only what is. And even that we don't know. We don't know what it is. No one knows what this is. No one knows what what is. What is what is. No. <laughs> That's what science has been trying to do. So the theologians have tried to tell us. The scientists have tried to tell us. And it's all very noble and interesting if you like that kind of thing. But it's not getting closer to any truth. I always look at it as dissection. So all knowledge does is dissect. 
and you know what you've got to do to dissect an animal. You've got to kill the fucker first. So immediately you're not, you, you've lost what's real, which is the living. <laughs> so before you even start, you've killed it. <laughs> so there's no truth in it. It's dead. And knowledge is dead. Knowledge isn't alive. This aliveness is without words. And the words are alive. But the idea that knowledge is a living thing is really not, absolutely not. The being, the living, the aliveness is with or without words. The words are irrelevant, are of no consequence whatsoever. And that's beautiful. So yeah, there's no there's no happy ever after. I mean, that's one of the reasons I never speak. I <laughs> know I love to make you cry. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't get as much pleasure from it as I do. Um, but yeah, the I mean the only the only chance of. I mean, you have there has to be liberation from the dream. From dreams of fantasies of what will be. Because the dream of fantasies of what will be are always and can only be missing. It's not missing because they're part of it. But what is? Because you're always looking past what is to what will be. And nearly everyone lives in the past or the future. Neither of which exist. And of course, without the past and the future, the present doesn't exist either. I'd like to debate that with Mr. Tolly. He'd probably, Can? he'd probably agree with me. Thanks, Kira. Uh, Kate. Kate. Yeah. Go ahead, well, I can't figure out how to raise my hand. Ugh, so... What you do is you um you do you do that. But I used to know how to do it, and now I just so oh, God, I'm sorry. Now I think I forgot what I was gonna say. Um. <laughs> oh, oh well. Wait, hold on a second. Well, it's just sort of tied into um, uh, well, I was I don't remember. I really don't remember, but I was looking out the window a lot today. Well, you do that a lot, don't you? I do that a lot. <laughs> and um, I was just like, there is just no one here. And I was like, but you know, you can't, I don't know that. No. No. Impossible to know that. No. Yes. And I'm... yet, and yet. <laughs> what are you going to say? I'm, I would still say it. There is just no one here. So. Well, you know what? I was going to go somewhere else with it. And um, to me, just the unconditional love is all about. Not all about uh, the, the innocence of it all, because this <laughs> because there is just no division. You know, there just is no one here to feel to feel loved or unloved mm -hmm. um and when you really do for someone like me who's been a thinker for so long and so in my head when that critical voice doesn't keep being reified 
even the voice of, oh, I'm not affected by the critical voice. It keeps just becoming a subtle piece of identity. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, I the identity can feel like it's just getting subtler and subtler, but it's still there. Um, But it's all, yeah, it's just all so innocent. Yeah. Also innocent, yeah. It's also innocent. And when so you're not divided with that critical voice and you mm, can't find anybody to judge anymore, you know? No. Well, you've been your harshest critic, haven't you? That's yeah. For nearly all selves, that's the case. Yeah. But then I feel like I was just reifying a, a sense of I, you can still go, I, I am the innocent one, but there is no one innocent. There is just innocence. Well, really, I mean, if we take it, really, there's no innocence, of course. No, there's no, no, there's there's no view. There's, there's no in, view. Innocence, innocence only refers to someone. Yeah. I mean, yes, we don't because talk about, someone that could have been guilty. Yeah, we don't talk about the innocence of the grass, do we? We don't. I mean, no. you can do. poets might do. I might do yeah. writing poetry, yeah. but we don't because the grass can't be guilty. So we don't talk about right. the innocent. Yeah. But yes, the grass and the human beings are equally yes. neither guilty nor innocent is closer, really. Yeah. We are the grass. Oh, I mean, without a doubt. We are the grass, of yeah. Course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and the clouds cause the clouds. And the clouds. I always think of Natalie with the clouds. She's obsessed with clouds. I'm obsessed with clouds. I am too. I love them. I, I am obsessed. obsessed. I am obsessed. I know you're obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with trees and grass and clouds. Yeah, and we are those. If there's anything. <laughs> okay, I'll leave now. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Jim Gibson's on the, in the house. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Jim. Yeah, I'm doing great. I've, I've been, I just recently got fascinated with the idea of implicate order. It's, got, it's, it's kind of an idea by David Bohm, who's a physicist. That implicate oh, you love order. You. oh you, you're going to give us some physics, aren't you? Come on. Well, no, not even that, because he was a physicist. But he has this whole, you know, he's a, he does he's not looking at the science of it, he's looking at the experience of it, right? And so the, the imp the, with the implicate order is it might take, right? This uh is that everything's just is by inference. It's not you can't know anything. It, this is by just itself. I mean it's it's an implicate order, like intelligence, it's not a knowable thing, because it's is all implied. If is love is implied, it's not actually something you can see or you know, it's not yeah, it's not a tangible, you know. Well that's nice. Yeah. I like I like the word yeah, and then there's explicit yeah, explicit. I like the word order. I like the word implicit. Yeah, in, yeah, it's just implicit. It's like yeah. And so it's just I, I do too. Just because it's all it's it's all what the feeling of the of the word is, you know. In this implicate it's like oh yeah it's, it's like kind of kind of like intimate you know that sort of thing so it's just yeah anyway yes, Jim. <laughs> but it's this order yeah so the implicate order would be the in, in, intelligence if there's an intelligence but i you know i kind of have the idea that there is an intelligence it's operation but the intelligence is based on this fullness not on any fractalization of it you know right so yeah Anyway, nice story. <laughs> nice story, Jim. I know. I love my stories. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Cheers, Jim. I was just thinking about your book title, Tim, The Stephening Silence. I mean, that just says it all, really. I think just always, and not even always, there's just no time for it to be deafening. It's just all. And in, in a way, all the, you know, love uh, that, that uh, we were all talking about, you know, the human love story and all of that, it's just... It's almost like there, there needs to be like a different word for each each of them, and there isn't even each of them because this deafening silence is also the love story. But yeah. it's like almost like there's two different kinds of love. Mm -hmm. Almost. Yeah. Mm. No, and uh, mm. yeah, the, mm. of when I'm saying unconditional talk, unconditional love, I'm talking about all kinds of love, mm. Mm -hmm. all kinds of yeah. Hate all times, all kinds of displeasure as well as pleasure, all kinds of sadness as well as happiness. It's, mm -hmm. it's just unconditional, it's all of it, yeah, just all of it, really. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, love isn't the right way, but the, when it's it, it just, I don't know. I remember the first time I heard Richard Sylvester, who I went to see quite a few times, and I heard Richard, and he talks about this in such a matter of fact way. And then he just came out with, oh, and I should say, there is an undoubted unconditional love. And I went, what the fuck? What on earth does he mean? Uh, Do you remember that kind of feeling? That yeah. sense? Well, how can you say all that, what, what he's just said about non-duality, and then say, oh, and there will be an undeniable unconditional love? Mm. What a load of shit. That can't be true. Uh -huh. Yeah. I remember that Viv yeah. vividly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't feel like the love um, that I would have for someone else. No, I mean, it, the, no. Sort, sort of at the same time, but it's not like that. No, it is that, but that's not that's no. not it. No. That's, but of course, there isn't anything that's not it. That's what I'm saying. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So of course, it is it. Yeah. As well. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, the word. I don't know. Just completely neutral, but in that neutrality, it feels like love. It feels, yeah. Well, I think it's it's because it doesn't. There's no judgment. There's, there's no, no discrimination. No, but it's all discrimination as well. Absolutely, all the mm -hmm. discrimination is love. You see, mm -hmm. and it's, it's like all the war is peace. Mm -hmm. It's so. Yeah. It's so not what self will ever accept. It's unacceptable. This mm -hmm. whole message is completely unacceptable to me. Mm -hmm. It can't not be. It can't not be because I am the judge of right and wrong, of good and evil, of better and worse. And yeah. unconditional love is that there isn't better or worse. Mm -hmm. And it's the thought, I, I need a glass of water. And it's also the critical thought that Kate was talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, that, you know, and of course it is the, it is me. Mm -hmm. Now there, now there's the crux, maybe. Mm -hmm. Of course, the whole of these, these talks and discussions is that there isn't a me, but of course, the sense of me is equally unconditional love, of course. Uh -huh. yeah. Of course. There isn't any exception. Yeah. Yeah. Razzia that is that. probably the crux. That probably mm. is the crux. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> probably. Uh, yes. Razia has a hand up. Oh, I was going to just say, Alice has got her hand up. Alice, would you like oh. to say something? I didn't see, yeah. Hi, Alice. Do you want to unmute? Okay. Hi, Tim. Hi, Alice. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again, too. Um, okay, so we're having... One of the things that is has been coming up more for me now is uh, when I have these thoughts, it shouldn't be, should be, and all these things we've been talking about, too. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to use the phrase, well, that's just happening. Um, once I notice it, I sit still with it, and that's just happening. And um, that's the kind of the only real thing I found useful if I can be with just what's happening. And I thought I would bring this up. Maybe, maybe there's something else besides just what's happening or anything else that might be useful. Um, like when you were talking that my cat didn't love me uh, I I got kind of a kind of a thing in my stomach and I said well that's just what's happening and that's how you know I'm, I'm gravitating more into trying to notice those things and there's just what's happening and yeah. I know that sounds repetitious but that's really kind of all that's going on just what's happening huh yeah, okay. yeah, but and then you know that you're doing this kind of as a as a practice that you say to yourself, "Oh, well, that's just what's happening." Well, that's just what's happening. You know, you don't you're not having any say over that either. So I couldn't recommend anything because it all just happens spontaneously, including your what your attempts to sort of manage the criticism. You you're having no say over that either. Right. I know that's not helpful. Yes, it is helpful. Because that's just happening quite naturally as well. Yeah. It's all happening naturally. Totally, totally everything. There's nothing unnatural. And really all self is, is an attempt to control nature, my nature. So I've got a nature, but I can, because I've got free will and choice and volition and personal power, I can control my nature. And there's things about my nature that I don't like. I've been told that they're faulty. I've told myself that they're faulty and I'm trying to correct them. Uh, but again, all your attempts to correct your faults, they're absolutely innocent and natural as well. All of it. So I, I have um, I have a daughter that doesn't speak to me and hasn't spoken to me for about two years because she said I was a bad mother and I have to agree with her. And um, but I have flashes of that and I feel I feel some regret about that. But I realize that you know I hear you say there is no past and. Um, Maybe it's just something that I have to still, that's just what's happening because I still have this feeling of guilt, which means I'm a person. And um, no, no, it doesn't. No, 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 not at all. No, it doesn't. No. I thought you couldn't have guilt or no. Did you? Now, did you think that? Well, there you go. There's the illusion of enlightenment right there, isn't it? There you go. Once I'm enlightened or awakened, I won't have any of these shit feelings. 
that I wanted that I, I'll be free from these feelings that I don't like that that are only that could only be mine. Well, that is what exactly what self says. Self claims everything for itself, especially guilt, because look how look how real I am because it's my guilt and I can do something about the guilt so that I don't feel guilty. Yes. No. 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 Oh. That feels freeing. Yeah, it's not your guilt any more than anything else. If there's a, if there's a feeling of guilt, there's a feeling of guilt. It's all innocent. All of it. And it's all love. In fact, guilt is very clearly love. Guilt is, I wish I could have been more loving. I mean, how much more unconditional love is there than guilt, really? There you go. Beautiful. Thank you, Tim. Oh, thanks, Alice. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. Lovely to see you all. I'll give. Them, I've got. Um. Um. I've got my next live meeting is in Brighton on the thirteenth of April, and there's still a few places. There's very limited places there because it's at my friend's house. But if you'd like to go, then you can still email me and come for the weekend. There's only talks on the Saturday. But I will be around on the Sunday. So, you know, we could meet up or something. We could have a casual meeting on the Sunday, maybe. But, yeah, we're meeting uh, in Brighton 13th of April. If you would like to, the details are on my website. And if you'd like to come, then just email me at clistim at gmail.com. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Thanks Tim. Thanks very much. Lovely to see you all. Bye. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks, you, Tim and Darren. Bye. 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 Thank you. Beautiful meeting. Bye-bye. Good meeting. Thank you. You're welcome.